guys, welcome to my channel. I'm really excited to be doing this video today. The look I'm wearing has turned out, let's just say, 10 times more Christmassy than I would have expected, but that just happened and we'll just accept it. I mean, Christmas is in like two months anyway, so. So today's video is called the YouTube Made Me Do It tag. I was recently watching this this morning actually by Kathleen Lights and I thought it was such a good idea because for any of us that have either been doing YouTube or like have watched YouTube for a long time, you'll know that there are certain products and certain products that were so hyped that you were just like, I need that in my life now. And I can totally relate. There has been so many products I have bought purely influenced by the people I watch on YouTube. So I pulled together a selection today, sort of like the things that I remember I was really excited to get. A lot of these purchases happened maybe like 2014, um, that was when I moved overseas and I had access to Sephora and Space and K and like the drugstore and all those beautiful places and the sheer excitement I remember at buying these products was very real. Anyway, I have amassed them for you today and let's have a chat. So I have used quite a few of these on my face so if I have used them today I will point them out for you. So let's start with the old school and it is the Urban Decay Naked Palette. You can see mine is very worn. This was hyped everywhere. I remember we couldn't really get it in New Zealand or some places that did sell it. It was really expensive. So thank you to Shanik. So I remember, I think it must have been Beauty Bay or something like that. She'd recommended that New Zealanders could get it off. So of course I went straight onto it and purchased it. I loved it dearly. As you can see, a lot of the shadows are very well loved. So I haven't used this for so long. I was going to say yonks. Who says the word yonks? I haven't used it for ages. Um, I obviously loved Half Baked and these ones at one point in time. I think this was very popular for me. Maybe like the year of 2011. I think that was my first year at university. Looking back on it and actually having used it today. Like it's a good palette. I mean you've got a great selection of products. You know it's good. But to be honest, using Half Baked today, I kind of forgot how yellow toned the gold is. I don't wear this kind of gold shade often, so it was like quite surprising for me. I mean, these colours are pretty stock standard. They're a lot cooler than the tones I would actually wear today, which is interesting to note because I didn't really think about cool and warm, warm, I cannot speak, <laughs> cool and warm tones back then. It just like wasn't in my vocabulary. There's a lot of palettes, especially like the Morphe palettes that I love a whole lot more that are definitely more inexpensive. I remember my first trip to the Canadian Sephora and my friend got dragged in. She's not as big of a makeup junkie as I am and I remember going straight beelining for hourglass because I'd never been to an hourglass stand before and I picked up this exact powder which is the hourglass, um, this is the ambient lighting powder in the shade Diffused Light. I can't remember who had been talking about this but I was just like, yep, we're the same skin shade, we're the same like kind of complexion type and I was like I need this in my life and it was really expensive like this was not cheap and I can't remember what it was it was in Canadian dollars so I just I needed it and I believed that it actually made me look so much more flawless than all my other powders that had come before it and to be honest I still really love this so to be honest I think it is a really good investment I think um, Hourglass with their kind of pan um, print means that you can actually use all the products unlike one that I'm going to show you further on so they are really good you can really use all the product up so it is very 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 good value for money and yeah I highly recommend this I also like dim light in the summertime but YouTube definitely made me buy this I think every man and their dog had an hourglass powder they were beautiful on that same Sephora trip I remember I got two more things this was like the time when I just went crazy and I remember I became like a VIB, is that what it's called? VIB, within like the first week which is like spending a crazy amount of money and I was so proud of myself. Um, a lot of the products I still do use so that's okay. But one thing that was also all over YouTube, like this whole entire video, is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and the shade that was very popular was Custard. And so of course I got Custard, luckily enough this did suit me. I never used this under my eyes for many years until recently I've discovered using it under my eyes is actually really nice but this concealer was just like you needed it it was like the best concealer ever basically it was the hype of like the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer but like back then so of course I had to get it and I didn't want vanilla I didn't want any other color I wanted custard broader and I have loved it and I still do use it today so I think it's worth the hype but YouTube very heavily influenced on that. 
Now, before I moved to London, I started working in a beauty store, so I actually got this one, which I have decanted um, from the beauty store then, I got the big one. But back when I was starting out and I did not want to spend however much money it was on the large primer, this is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I was buying the small, sort of like travel sized ones, they were a lot more affordable, little pump, super cute, loved it. That was hyped so, so much and one of the hard things about it being hyped was that it was just like so expensive but I just wanted to try it so I remember getting the travel size. I must have gone through at least three of the travel sized ones in my time before I started using the big one and to this day, I mean I'm wearing it today, I still really really love it. So it definitely is worth it but it is a pricey purchase but this was everywhere. Hourglass I feel like really had a moment when it first came out, especially with those powders, with the primer as well as with the blushes, just because they were so beautiful and just beautiful and I still love all their products to this day so thank you YouTube for letting me discover Hourglass. An old school favourite, I still remember being at university and going to Mecca Cosmetica to look at this. Again I think this was about like $80 or something so I don't think I bought it for quite a while because I was a uni student, you know, I wasn't going to be going out and getting some Nars Cheer Glow. Um, so this was all over YouTube, so many people were using this, saying it was their favourite foundation. I remember Tanya Burr used to use this all the time, I was obsessed with her videos, I really really wanted to try it. I remember everyone talking about this, Nars Cheer Glow, Nars Cheer Glow, there never really was the hype about the other one, which was like the Nars... The matte version which I think is also actually discontinued now but this is an amazing foundation I love it it's not too thick it has a beautiful consistency it's definitely not sheer by any means so the name is quite deceiving um, but it's super buildable I think it lasts really really well throughout the day it goes beautifully with that primer just in case you have them both and yeah I think they do a really good color range if you are more of sort of like a golden olive undertone I think one of the things I wanted for years after hearing it on YouTube was the MAC. This is the Soft and Gentle Mineralized Skin Finish and this is the more recent packaging I'm pretty sure. I picked this up when I went to America, when was it, 2014 as well, starting to move overseas and I was just like, oh my gosh, MAC in America, I've heard so many things and I wanted so many things. So one of the things I picked up was this and I did love it, I mean it was basically must have been about my second highlight I ever owned. I was totally sucked in and I don't have it now because it actually broke a long time ago with the Mary Luminizer um, highlighter by The Balm and that was amazing and I was just like, oh my god, I've got the sheen, you know, highlighters were really just making the big impact coming in and so I really wanted this one and I always remember the lady at the counter said it would be too pink toned for me but I had heard it on YouTube. I had seen the videos and I was like, I don't care, give it to me. Like. I'm willing to buy it and I mean it is quite a beautiful highlighter it is very intense it's definitely not on the subtle side I'm pretty sure I've talked about this one maybe in my top six highlighters a couple months ago but to be honest since more highlighters have come out and highlighters have become such a staple in many people's routines I think you can definitely get a better highlighter this is quite pigmented um, but it's quite uh, how would you say it's got like glitter particles it's not like a smooth um, formula like the Laura Mercier matte radiance baked powder highlight 01 which is my absolute favorite um, so yeah this one is nice it is more high impact but again I really just don't like the chunkiness and it is kind of a little bit pale for me I'd say kind of a little bit gray tone so that lady definitely knew what she was talking about but YouTube made me do it this is the NARS Laguna Bronzer. I think everyone can relate to this. I'm wearing it today and I actually really like how it turned out. It's kind of like that you've been on holiday. It's kind of like a, not, I'm not going to call it like a dirty brown, but it's like an actual your tanned kind of brown, in my opinion. This pan annoys me so much because obviously I hit pan. And this is what I was talking about before compared to the hourglass is that these bronzers aren't made to last once you hit pan. Like if I go too shallow over here, it's totally gonna crack and just like disperse. I think the actual first time I got one of these was through like an online thing. I don't even know what it was. It was an online trade me seller, I think, who was going to America and she said, 
if you put in your orders I can pick them up for you so for some reason I got casino which is like the next it's like the darkest one I'm pretty sure don't even ask me why I mean I was even paler back then you know uni don't see the Sun as much and I remember I got that and I think I got super orgasm as well I just went like bigger and bolder I don't know why but I remember Laguna is actually a really nice bronzer it's definitely not my favorite but I feel like it's just like a staple like you will use it in your collection and I actually really like it today so I may be bringing it out again in the future moving on to more semi recent times and the benefit gimme brow was everywhere and this is one of the original um, sort of like packagings and back then it was only in like two shades so you had like the light color or you had this color this was called medium deep I'm pretty sure I went through at least two of these because when I was traveling it was just like perfect but back then I hadn't really thought about matching my hair color to my eyebrow color so I've had red hair for like quite a few years but there was only two colors I wanted to try it and I used to use this all the time now personally these days I prefer something that kind of matches my hair that's still dark but has a little bit of warmth to it this is kind of like a flat cool toned color so I am wearing it today over top of what I've already got on and I do love it and it really does make your eyebrows look a lot thicker but YouTube man this was hyped like every every person tried it great concept and they were basically the first ones I'm pretty sure that came out with a fibrous brow gel so OGs oh right there so to what else I'm wearing on my eyebrows today this is I mean last year or the year before I can't remember this was hyped to the max it was the Anastasia dip brow pomade since then a lot of other brow pomades have come out and I still love this I mean I think it is really good I have the shade Auburn which I'm wearing today it's slightly warm when my hair is a little bit more purple toned I can get away with it more my hair is more red toned like a few more coppers and stuff but the consistency of this is amazing I've had this forever it says you can only use it for six months or last for six months I don't agree I think if you keep it in a good condition and make sure that it's most of the time airtight so even when you're using it make sure to put the lid back on that is a great investment now this was everywhere especially with that kind of trend of the really strong brows or like that kind of ombre effect brows that people were doing and I've never been like a super strong brow person but I do love that you can put this on with a brow brush and you can brush it through with a spoolie and it really just disperses it like really beautifully and also not many people were coming out with an auburn shade so that was really nice and yeah I really like it YouTube Anastasia blew up that is for sure this of course is the Becca champagne pop highlighter collaboration with Jaclyn Hill and it is a beautiful highlighter like I'll pop it next to ye old soft and gentle it is intense like you can see it there it's a lot more yellow toned than the soft and gentle and you do you get so much product it is You've got to be so careful with the bigger highlighters though because they're very fragile but everyone on YouTube had this. It was in everybody's favourites, everybody wanted to try it whether they loved it eventually or not, they wanted to try it. And I can kind of pull it off now if I'm bronzy. I definitely could not pull this off in winter, I think it is far too tan for me but I think maybe if I get maybe like a tan in summer I could pull it off but you can see it there. I've got it there and it is a beautiful highlighter, I do love it but to be honest on the everyday I don't reach for it that much but YouTube. YouTube okay the last one the last thing whew, there's like four of them I wonder if we can guess it is the Morphe brushes palette oh my god things go from zero to 100 when hyped things are affordable so obviously with the morphe palettes being really affordable shit just hit the fan like basically they were everywhere everyone was using them because they were also really hard to get your hands on if you were outside of the u.s um so if you had it you wanted to use it because obviously people wanted to see it therefore your videos were very popular so of course i watched many tutorials on using them I hadn't even really thought about like what I wanted to get from the store but when we went to America we managed to stop in to the LA store waited in line like a half an hour line to get in there and I still didn't really know what I wanted so I just kind of grabbed what I could um so I remember I picked up the 350 the 35T the 
the 35k as well as the Jaclyn Hill palette because shipping on these was like ridiculously expensive so that was never going to happen and I I really like them to be honest my favorite two palettes are probably the 35k and the 350 I'm just like shuffling them to figure out which is which oh no still got it wrong okay I'll just hold up the 350 because this is one of my favorites to be honest I think the packaging is really good it's very slim it's very easy to travel with if I'm doing like a big trip I'll usually take at least one palette because then if I need to go out or I want to do something fun at least I've got all all of these shadows and if anyone ever asks me which palette they should get if they are a fall slash autumn like a really warm eye type I will always recommend this because the value for money is just insane and this was obviously the original they've now come out that you can buy the 350 in just shimmers or you can buy the 350 in just mattes and I think that would be beautiful as well so these are now available in New Zealand so I may have to do a little bit of an order I think it's makeup.co.nz I'll put that in the dumper but this is absolutely stunning the value for money is insane I would choose these over the naked palettes by Urban Decay every single time I really hope you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see my future videos I try to put up two a week sometimes it's one a week because I just get like a little bit busy so I hope you guys don't mind um, but I love to see our little numbers growing I love having more people in my little YouTube family it makes me really excited like I love that and I love making these videos so have an amazing day tell me below anything that YouTube has made you buy because I love hearing other stories and things that I probably still want and I haven't got around to buying I'd love to know if you guys got it in the end so yes have an amazing day and I shall see you soon bye